You are listening to Uncomfortable, comfortable conversations around uncomfortable topics. Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of Uncomfortable. I do apologize for the delay in my schedule. It's been, you know, it's been a rough year for everyone and I've definitely had to step back from making as many episodes as I used to, but hopefully I'm planning to get back into it. Hopefully this is me back on track. Um, Anyway, I do have a great episode coming up for you today. So as you know, I'm Debbie. I'm the host of Uncomfortable and today's conversation I'm really excited about. It's with Alex Koblefrakes, who is the co-founder of The Agenda Period. Now, before we get into the episode, I just wanted to mention that Uncomfortable is an independent podcast and needs your support. You can financially support us if you can afford it by visiting uncomfortable.blog forward slash donate and there'll be information on there on how you can support us. If you are a small business that aligns with our values, then you can reach out to me about sponsorship opportunities. You can email me at hello at uncomfortable.blog. Now, if you can't financially support the podcast, then hey, that is absolutely okay. Just please keep listening and consider giving us a five-star rating over on Apple Podcasts. Now, let me tell you all about my guest. Now, as I mentioned, Alex is the co-founder of The Agenda Period. Early in Alex's health coaching career, it became pretty obvious to her that her desire to do certain tasks varied based on where she was at in her menstrual cycle. So after some detailed observation, uh, she realized that sales calls that happened when she was ovulating had a higher conversion rate. So both Alex and her co-founder, Sunny, realized that when people have a deeper understanding of their hormonal fluctuations, they can actually use them to their advantage and see amazing results in their lives and in their businesses. So from this moment on, the agenda period was born. And after a really great successful Kickstarter campaign, Alex and Sunny designed and launched a physical planner. However, they realized there was a desire for an app. So now Alex finds herself being the co-founder of a tech company, not something she had planned, but they have launched another amazing Kickstarter and they're hard at work on the Agenda Period app. And I am super excited to check this app out. I really hope that you enjoy this episode with Alex and I and that you learn something. Um, Do beware, it is an uncomfortable conversation and hey, sometimes there's some adult language. So make sure you have your headphones on. This podcast was recorded and produced in Vancouver, BC, and this land on which I work is the unceded shared traditional territories of the Coast Salish peoples, including the territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Alex, thanks so much for joining me on this episode of Uncomfortable. Yay, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Well, I'm sure you know periods are one of my favorite topics. Uh, something I know, right, that uh, I just, I feel like should be talked about a hell of a lot more. So when I was told about your business, I was like, oh my God, I'm really interested. And um, yeah, reached out and we ended up chatting, which is great. So tell us about your business. I love talking about the agenda period. It is so much fun. And I'm there with you. We definitely need to talk about periods more. So high level, the agenda period is a planner and soon to be mobile application that helps women in business um, understand the natural hormonal fluctuations that they go through with their monthly cycle, and then use that those fluctuations for their own productivity and impact in their business. 
Um, so it might sound like kind of a strange concept, but it's really, we maybe ha have an easier time do doing different tasks depending on where we're at in our menstrual cycle. And so instead of trying to force ourselves or push through or do something we don't want to do, it's about understanding when is going to be the easiest time to schedule with our cycle and then just do that instead. So it's like true biohacking. Yeah, it, it totally makes sense. It's something I had never thought about never <laughs> in my life. And obviously, I know the days when I'm just too tired to do anything. And it's probably because my period's about to come or, you know, I'm in that angry phase or something. So I'm probably not in the best place to make a decision. But or maybe I am. Um, <laughs> right. When I'm being more honest. Uh, but yeah, I never kind of put it together as like a, a kind of way of helping you run and make decisions in your business and do certain tasks. So I love that connection, especially as someone who has her own business. And it just as soon as I heard it was like, aha, like that light bulb moment happened. Yeah. So yeah. So tell us about how, like, how did you even come up with this? That is such a fun question. And I just, I also want to just put this disclaimer out there because women work so hard. So we're not trying to say women need to do more. We're not saying that at all. And we're also not suggesting that you're not capable of doing anything that you want to do on any day of your cycle. Uh, but really just, uh, it's about figuring out that recipe and figuring out what is going to feel the most fun to do. And then focusing on that uh, because each of the phases of the cycle really lends itself well to different activities and tasks. So we don't have to do everything all the time. We can actually work smarter, not harder, right? And I'll actually take work off of your plate if you do this. So those are some things I always just want to kind of come in with because I know there's this, there's already such a toxic narrative around women doing it all right. And, yeah. and really having such full lives and plates and, and no ability to get that help that they need. And so that's, we are not here to mom shame or entrepreneur lady shame anybody. Yeah. Uh, but it's really about like, how can we actually help simplify this system and structure for you and make it feel even more in alignment with your life? Um, I love that. And that's actually what drew me entirely into this work and <laughs> was I was starting my own health coaching company and I was drowning, trying to figure out entrepreneurship and not knowing what the hell was going on because some days I felt like I was on top of the world. I was crushing everything. And then I would have these plummets in my business where I was seriously on the floor sobbing because I was like, I'm never going to get another client. No one's ever going to hire me to be their coach. I should probably just go get a job. I would literally pull up indeed every single month. Um, like, what kind of high impact jobs can I get in this area and still work from home? Cause I really, I, I like that part now. Um, and looking back, it was like, every time I was in the luteal phase, I would get on job boards like every single time. <laughs> and ever, that was like when the self doubt, the self criticism, because I didn't understand how to work with the energy of that phase. So every single time I was there, I was like, man, I got to get a job. <laughs> I feel like I still do that. <laughs> I still, I'm still there. I'm excited for your app to come up because I um, did, I did contribute to the Kickstarter, so I'll, I'll get it when um, it comes out, and I'm excited to start working and working with that pattern. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it, and it got to the point where finally I was like, every time that urge to like jump on the job board, I was like, okay, let me check my agenda. What phase? Of, what day of my cycle am I on? Maybe I don't need, maybe I can close the Indeed page. Maybe I don't need to go on idealist.com today. It's going to be okay. Um, so even just that self-awareness for me was really freeing to know. Yeah. So backing up how, so I was all over the place in my business, not really understanding these connections. And it, it, it felt long enough in between these periods where it always took me by surprise. I was never anticipating that next crash or that next feeling of hopelessness in my business because I wasn't tracking it. Um, so a, a mentor of mine actually asked me to start tracking my sales conversions so that I could see yes to no ratio in my business. So I could actually see who was paying me, who was having me sign, sign up as their coach, you know? So I was like, great, I can make a spreadsheet. And when I made that spreadsheet, it became pretty clear that I was having higher sales conversions when I was in the ovulation phase of my cycle. Interesting. 
Yeah. So, I mean, I had read Elisa Vidi, I'd read Christian Northrup. I'd learned about cycle syncing a long time ago. So learning how to shift exercise based on the phase or shift your nutrition. You know, I'd even read in biology about like our faces are the most symmetrical when we're ovulating. Um, so all these things I'm like, oh, well, it, it makes sense that my sales are easier if I'm more confident and glowing during that time, you know, yeah. based on the biology that's going on. So I was like, all these piece, pieces make a lot of sense to me, but why are we not doing it for our business? We know it works for exercise. We know it works for nutrition. We know it works for all these parts and pieces of our life. Why am I not doing it for my business? Um, and I couldn't find an answer to why we weren't doing it other than we just don't talk about periods enough. We don't talk about hormones, women's hormones enough. Um, so I, I just decided, you know, I, I really need to do this intentionally instead of falling into these happy accidents. So I wanted to buy a planner. I wanted someone to have figured out it out for me and mapped it out for me. And when I didn't find it on the market, I um, recruited a co-founder and we we made it and we just made it as a small side project that has now taken over my whole life. Yeah. It's no, your business. <laughs> yeah. My other business kind of fell to the wayside and any of the coaching that I do now really has a lot of grounding in period empowerment and cycle education. So that's awesome, which is great to see because, you know, even whether I was working in a, you know, quote unquote regular job or as my business, I never, I would just always push through whatever I was feeling. Like if I was having a day where my period had just arrived and I had cramps and it was like, no, I have to push through because I have to work. I wasn't thinking about possibly the damage I was doing to myself emotionally and physically because I felt like, no, I need to, I need to work or even using those days to my advantage. Like when you're ovulating and, you know, perhaps you're, you're feeling more powerful. Um, so it's really great that you kind of brought that to the surface and your app is coming out soon. How's, how's that going? It's crazy. I never thought I would work on a mobile application. I am not a tech person. <laughs> I am like really good at email and the word suite. So um, like to dive into this whole different world has been really interesting. But when we like we we toted around these planners and went to a whole bunch of events and they're beautiful and they're very supportive and they're very heavy. Uh, so when we look yeah. at like impact and sustainability and the fact that most people on the planet have access to some kind of cellular device, Really, if we're if we're wanting to get this knowledge to as many people as possible, switching over to a mobile application is the only thing that really makes sense. Um, but yeah, so I mean, we went through an extensive competitive analysis, looking at the apps, making sure there wasn't something on the market filling this need already. Customer discovery, really talking through what what our customer our current customers wanted in terms of the switch to a mobile application. So it's not just this is what I want. Because again, remember, I didn't really want to make an app when I started. <laughs> so I was like, I better get some input from other people who all tell me they want an app and see what they think we should build into this thing. Um, so it's really been thoughtfully put together and we're so excited for the first version to get released. Um, and then, you know, fix it a million times because that's, I guess, the process with software. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's just um, constant update. Constant updates, more updates, another update. <laughs> more features, new things, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's just so exciting because the people who have used it, just seeing what has shifted and changed for them through this process and like the permission that's been granted. So we're really excited about this next version and, and how that can even have a greater reach and impact for people on the planet. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Now, what has been some of the feedback that you've received from people even using the physical planners? Yeah, so a big thing is that self-awareness, understanding, um, okay, why, uh, oh, I understand that thing that keeps feeling like, why do I fight with my husband about the same topic every single month? No, it's actually cyclical. And now we can work to find some different strategies instead of having the same fight every single month. Um, women who have told me that they're in their 40s and they're excited for the first time ever to have a period where like they've had period related anxiety and stress and pain. They're excited because they're, they want to start their next cycle in the, in their, in the agenda. 
that's a huge one. That one really kind of took me off guard when people like that's a huge paradigm shift for someone who has been inundated in this culture of your body sucks your body's inferior period suck to say like I'm excited for my period I'm just like oh my god yeah (laughs) um you know women talking about just so seeing some of those same results as I did is like wow I can crush my sales when I'm focusing on it at the right time Mm -hmm. I have more energy Oh, throughout the entire cycle, because I'm getting into alignment with what task feels really good. So there's just been so many cool aha moments that have come out from our, from our customers. And it's just been a a really a beautiful gift to work on this project. That's fantastic. So tell us um, a little bit about how like your experience and how it's kind of empowered you, like you've taken on this whole new business. And are you still using the tracking in order to to kind of get this new app launched? Because that's a whole different turning point. As, as you say, you weren't techie. You had, had no plans on getting into app development. But yeah, how are you using it to navigate that? Yeah, so my relationship with it has shifted a tiny bit because I'm pregnant right now. Um, but what's been really interesting is, so my co-founder and I, that that's how we started off all of our business meetings is like cycle check-in where are you at? How are you feeling? And kind of using that to inform, I want to take over these tasks today because I know this is going to be really in alignment for us. So we use that a lot in our business and I am convinced it's one of the reasons that this has moved so quickly. You know, we've been really working on this for less than two years, maybe a year and a half that we've been doing this work and we're already getting through the stage where we've, been accepted through an, an accelerator program and gone through that whole process and now are building out tech. And a lot of it is that honest, transparent alignment with our own cycles. Um, and it, really interestingly, as a pregnant person, because during pregnancy, we have a ton of progesterone and a ton of estrogen that are kind of in flux, as well as some other important hormones throughout the entire pregnancy. And there are certain days that really remind me of my follicular phase when I was cycle tracking before, or days that remind me of like a luteal phase day. And so I can almost feel when I'm like really high up or processing a lot of that specific hormone. And then I can use that to my advantage and be like, okay, great. I really feel luteal today. I'm going to go organize the nursery. I am going to go put everything in bins and fold everything and wash everything. So it's interesting how much more I just know myself and how that has changed everything in my life because I'm able to meet myself where I'm at and I know how to support myself hormonally, emotionally. Um, yeah, I've, I've never known my own body so well as, you know, before I started this intense cycle tracking yeah, that's amazing. I feel like a t-shirt should be made with like, I'm really feeling luteal today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're, we're yeah. starting to look at t-shirt merch. So we should definitely have a fun catchphrase for each day, each cycle phase. That'd be so amazing. You can like buy it in a four pack and like put it out to the world. Yes. I, I think that I would buy that. I would buy that. <laughs> um, so like, how did you so you were a health coach prior to this and I'm just curious to know about the education that you had regarding periods women's cycle women's health because like I know growing up it was almost nothing I think we had our little primary seven class taken aside all the girls taken aside watch this probably 10 minute video that had some like awful clips like biology clips in it and then someone who on their period wearing a pad running through a field feeling great (laughs) kind of thing and like and and that was kind of it and we were given pads not even tampons I didn't know how to use a tampon for years I didn't even try I was too scared um and and like that was all we had which (laughs) to me I'm really hoping it's better but I'm just curious what your education was and how did you come to learn about all of the phases of the cycle my education was jack can I swear on this podcast you can (laughs) jack shit about periods um I actually started my period before that fun little class Uh, my class was pretty similar um I started in fifth grade I was 10 and it was terrifying 
And yeah, it wasn't until sixth grade where we got the class. And then I was like, yeah, oh my God, what periods? Like just pretend, I don't want to be like the weird, I out myself as like already having started my period. So I definitely was like, what is all of this stuff? You know, it's like, cause that whole weird time frame where everyone's being so quiet in the bathroom, trying not, to, and it sounds like the loudest, crinkliest, like, <laughs> that's what it sounds like, even though it's probably like, <laughs> but like yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, someone's going to hear me. And they're going to know I'm opening a pad. Um, I actually did not know how to use tampons correctly. And so used attempted to use them incorrectly for six months. So I didn't know you had to take the applicator out because I read the instructions and it doesn't say <laughs> to take the applicator out. And when obviously that's pretty if you know what the word application to apply means, it's pretty obvious, but not when you're 10. So I, I was like, man, tampons really suck. Like, cause I had the freaking applicator inside. So it was like not working, not absorbing a damn thing. Um, so that was traumatic. <laughs> um, and in my class, I remember my, uh, my science teacher, cause they made our science teachers do it. It wasn't even through the health class. She was like, okay, we're going to have a tampon race. And so we had to like, everyone took out a tampon and they see, see who could shoot it the furthest across the room. Because I think she was trying to like break the ice and make us like laugh about it. And she's like, okay, we get five minutes. You can say all the weird words you've heard about periods and vaginas. And we like got, just got it out of the way and we laughed about it. And she's like, okay, you can't laugh about it anymore. This is serious. <laughs> you need to know about this. But then it was like one class and it was like, your body's changing. You're going to start bleeding here's some products and here's how you use them. Oh my God. But didn't talk, (laughs) good luck ladies, but didn't talk about, you know, really just talked about the period, did not talk about the entire cycle. And it's so interesting when, when we talk to customers now or just people out in the world, they're like, like, so how long is your, does your cycle last? Uh, about five days. But great. So that's, that is, is that the time when you're bleeding during the month? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So how long does it take from the day one where you start bleeding until the next time that you start bleeding, oh, you know, they can kind of figure it out. But when we start talking about follicular and luteal, people are like, what? Yeah, what? We, I literally only probably learned those <laughs> words a few years ago and I'm 38. Yeah. Yeah. So the smartest, most competent women we know have no like have rarely have a clue unless they've gone through fertility or who have done tracking for their own pregnancy, like holistic family practice, um, likely haven't like in our experience, haven't really heard about those words because they were not taught about them. And Mm -hmm. it, it was the same to me, actually, when I kind of really cracked this pattern for myself, I mean, I had, I had read some books around hormonal health, but very briefly. And I actually thought I was the last of the party, you know, I was like, Oh God, you know, I'm 27 now. So everyone probably knows about this already. And then we started going out on the road with a product and everyone's like, what? What? (laughs) (laughs) Because it's so abysmal. And we see, so so we see that in school. So that really holds women back. We see that in the medical medical community where Mm -hmm. women are consistently cut out of research. It's getting better, but you know, they're seen as too pesky because their hormones fluctuate. So cut out of medicine that is then later prescribed to women or you know so we're like this will definitely work for you but we have no idea because we've never tested it on people with your home wow wow so yeah the education that i received around my period was was abysmal absolutely unfortunately yeah yeah Yeah, no i'm i'm with you on that and i honestly hope that it is better and i don't know actually because i'm still all my friends with kids the kids are still kind of too young to get that yet so I'm curious to see what they're what happens I don't really think it's better uh because we've actually had a lot of moms who have bought the product for their daughters wow Wow. like hoping to give them a better because they're still not really learning about it in school yeah in in a full complete way yeah Yeah. I mean it's great that the products are out there and I think yeah when I started learning a bit more about periods was I found some it wasn't even a mobile app it was just a website and I can't remember what it was called that I started to track my periods and then I moved on to an app I think I used flow Mm -hmm. for a while um, and then I track it also through my Fitbit and, you know, now I'm getting more 
succinct with things and tracking different things because I'm trying to get pregnant. So you start to learn. But yeah, it's like you're in your mid 30s when you start to learn this because, yeah, you want to get pregnant. So you're like, oh shit, I have to figure things out. And you really, that should have been taught a long, long time ago. So it's really sad. Um, why do you think there's still such a stigma around periods? Like in your experience and doing all this research, I'm assuming you probably come across people who still don't really want to talk about it or feel all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Like, why is that there? Why does that stigma still exist? I think it is the internalized patriarchy. <laughs> um, you know, we really look across, like, the, like, yeah, the resources are there if you seek them out yourselves, right? But we have all of these narratives around what it means to be female, what it means to be a woman. Um, and And none of the stories are really that good. I mean, we look at, the narrative period suck and they're horrible. It's going to be painful. And then if you have birth, it's going to be miserable and it's going to be horrendous. And there's no way around that. And then ladies, menopause, perimenopause, menopause, it'll also be terrible. We, there is nothing that we talk about men's bodies in that way. Mm -hmm. And if there was this cultural phenomenon where all men essentially experience something as terrible and painful, can this consistently, we would have committees and we would have government agencies like think of how quick they figured out viagra we're like there's not mm-hmm. enough men getting hard anymore so we we need to figure out how we can pay for this with insurance money yeah and the conscience the contraceptive pill isn't even covered in insurance well in canada it's not in the uk i have to say the uk it's free um, which is amazing. So thanks United Kingdom for doing something right. But in Canada, it's not. I'm assuming in the US, it's not. It's, they're trying to take the protections away all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think I think there's a lot of that where all of these experiences are just continue to, the narrative is that it sucks. Like to be in a female body sucks. And it's just the silent cross we, we must bear as being women. I'm like, you know what? We deserve better than that. So w- we found that actually with cycle syncing, you can figure out what is wrong, what is causing that period pain, and then stop experiencing painful periods. So I no longer have painful periods. Ooh. And like, what did and this you is not like, it's not like a brag moment, but it's just like, <laughs> you know, like it doesn't have to be this way. So all of these things that are, yeah. are seen as very common are not actually normal. It's not actually normal for your entire life to be miserable. It's actually not yeah. normal. Yeah. It's really I mean, extremely common for us to be experiencing. To, and, and to put up with it and just kind of find ways to cope. And I'm curious if you're willing to share, like, what was it that you did? I know your body will be different from other people's. So this advice may not necessarily translate to someone else. But like, I'm just curious to know what changes you made in order to kind of make your periods less painful. Yeah. So, I mean, a great book is Laura Bryden has the period repair manual. So that was, Mm -hmm. I read, my shelf has so many period books on it. As I started to do this work, I buy like a period book a month at least. Um, But that was because I wanted, people kept asking us more and more questions as we, you know, we're kind of seen as like the period lady. So like I wanted to get as much information as possible. So I, I didn't have really too bad of periods. Once I started aligning with the phases so that just in itself not pushing through like you're talking about your body's doing a lot of work when you have a period you're shedding the endometrium lining so focusing on those more internal tasks that more kind of low-key energy was a big one already and I noticed it when I had when I had this huge event and I pushed through and I was on my period and it was the first painful period I'd had in six months because I was just so out of alignment with what my body was asking for Mm -hmm. so that that in itself super duper helpful is just kind of getting lined up with what your body wants to be doing. So that was like thing number one made it much better. Um, but then I was still having some breast tenderness in the, the end of the luteal phase as well as some bloating. And so I started seed cycling first, which are, you know, it's, you can Google seed cycling and there are tons of beautiful descriptions, but it's just adding a couple of tablespoons of seeds that are supposed to support the hormones. Um, so support estrogen and progesterone and making sure that those levels are balanced out. Again, there are a lot of these things that are holistic right now and don't have the scientific research or 
backing beyond them, but I found it to be supportive for myself. So this could be something you could try out. You just switch between eating like sunflower seeds and flax seeds, depending on where you are in your cycle. And I just like put them on my yogurt or something like that. Yeah. Super easy. And then I was still having the breast tenderness. And so in the period repair manual, Laura talked about um, magnesium or not enough magnesium is like, can be one of the number one mm-hmm causes for any of those pesky period symptoms. And so she said her top three were um, magnesium, zinc, and B6. And so I actually was looking for magnesium on Amazon and I found this supplement that had magnesium, zinc, and B6 in it. And I was like, huh, that's fun. I'll try that one. So um, I just started taking it every single day. So I wasn't focusing on just during the luteal phase, but I just took it always to help support the balancing of the entire cycle. And I stopped having breast tenderness. And it's actually how I knew I was pregnant is because I was like, my boobs haven't hurt in six months. So this was like five days post ovulation. And I was like, I'm pregnant. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, it's not gonna show up anywhere for a while. So then I had to wait anxiously for that first positive (laughs) pregnancy test. But I was like, my boobs have seriously not hurt in months. And they hurt. That's awesome. And so that's amazing that you knew that without even having to deal with tests or Uh, anything. I'm going through um, the, uh, the book is gone. Usually it's on my table here, but I'm tracking my, for taking charge of my fertility. I love that book. I've read I'm that working one. through that right now in tracking pretty much everything from periods to cervical fluids to, you know, all the stuff, T- taking my temperature every morning. Um, yeah, and it's just amazing. I didn't know, like, yeah, if you get more in tune, you could potentially figure out that you're pregnant without even having a pregnancy test. Which I really, I needed to make sure that, you know, for my, I was like, but yeah. I was like, man, my seriously, because oh, I was like, this this boob pain has been gone from my life, and now it's like so strong. I was like, oh my god, I'm pregnant. <laughs> That's awesome, and I'm definitely going to check out the magnesium thing because I get painful boobs for about a week, a week and a half before my period. Yeah. It's just constant. Yeah, that was me too. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So the that magnesium supplement, I mean, really. So all those things kind of work together, right? The first was the track, like that, mm-hmm. that really kind tracking and alignment, then trying out the seed cycling. And, and then I just, I, it was like fine tuning the system because I was like, I know my body so well, why is it still, this piece is not going well for me, or I, I could use some more support here. And so it really allowed me to become the ultimate authority. And when something's off, I know when something's off. Just like I told you, my boobs should not be hurting right now. They haven't hurt, been hurting in a long time. Something is going on. It clues us in and I get to be that authority, um, which I think is probably another reason with my tinfoil hat of why periods are so shameful and, and stigmatized. It's because we don't really like women to be the ultimate authorities on themselves. Yeah. We actually have words for those kind of women who think they know too much about. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so true. I know. It's like when you go to the doctor and it's a male doctor telling you how you should, not that they all do this. I've had some great male doctors who, you know, have been very um, kind and supportive around my cycle, but there has been the odd one that kind of feels like they know better, which I'm like, well, it's my body so hmm, no you know yeah but when we're not trained to be like that cycle scientist we don't even know so women constantly take on therapies or pills or hormone replacements or things that may not be in their best interest because Mm -hmm. the system is set up that way you know Mm -hmm. it's set up for you not to be the authority so you will just have feel like there's not really any other choice besides listen, even if it's against your intuition, even if it's against your own best interest. Um, That's just kind of the allopathic medical paradigm that we live in and advanced science and medicine is fantastic. um, And I'm so grateful for it. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's really, we're starting to see now long-term studies come out about what birth control can do to you or what it has done to people. Um, We're seeing now what happens with early hysterectomies and and what that can even do long-term, like the long-term implications for brain health. 
wow. when we remove those hormones from our body. Yeah. So it's tough. It's tough because it also liberated women. It gave women the control over, you know, going back to work and becoming a, a strong force in all of these places where they should have been. But I'm like, well, we could have also just taught them how to really cycle sync from the beginning. And that would have been a really great method to control their family planning. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I even reading, you know, reading in the book, taking charge of your fertility, just hearing some of the stories of people who didn't understand how their cycle worked because they had been put on birth control, maybe for a hormonal reason from a very young age and then not understanding how cervical fluid works. And I have to say, it's only been an probably in the past year that I've understood how cervical fluid works and someone who thought there was something wrong with them. And I think this has happened to many people, especially at a young age, when you have cervical fluid and you think you have some sort of infection and someone actually going to a doctor and a doctor also thinking that they have an infection and not understanding. And I mean, it could also be that that GP just doesn't have, didn't also get like the full education around women's health too like I wonder how much that is taught unless you specialize yeah 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 not enough not not enough definitely which is great that there's people like you in the world making these fantastic apps that are definitely (laughs) going to help I'm curious to know do you have a a launch date yet for your app or is it still We're hoping um, by end of November. So it's just a fun fun process of trying to figure out software. Um, And, and luckily there are so many of, there are so many more people when I I thought no one was talking about this stuff. So when I went down the rabbit hole, I found like there were hundreds of people talking about these things, but they're all in their like dark little corners of the internet. So it's like, how do we amplify the message and connect all of these resources? So it's not so hard to run into this information. Yeah. You know, that's something I'm super passionate about is like, oh my gosh, how can we connect with this organization? So if you're listening and you know a period organization, hook us together so we can, you know, make this bigger chain impact um, across the planet because there are a lot of people who have come before us who have paved the way for this work to be possible. And we really just need to make those connection points so that everyone who menstruates has access to how their body works. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So yeah, listeners, if you know organizations, please connect them with Alex. Um, (laughs) Before we wrap up, I'm just curious to know any other awesome resources that you tend to refer to. I know we've already mentioned a few, but any other than your own, which I will definitely put in the show notes, theperiodagenda.com. People, make sure you check it out. But any other resources and stuff that you think are really valuable for people who are interested in tracking and learning more about their cycle. Yeah. So I've got a a couple of orgs that I really love. So one is the menstrual health hub. So that's actually out of Germany. So they send out a monthly newsletter and they just kind of talk about period policy and what's going on in the world around periods and give tons of resources. They're great. There is a school called red school in the UK Um, And they made a book called Wild Power. And so they have a course that they call Menstruality Leadership. So like leading from this place of deeply embodied feminine energy and like leading from your cycle. So I'm obsessed with them. They are so amazing. And their book was just like, I was like, I needed this when I went through puberty. It was so good. So like they're amazing. Um, I have a friend named Kate Codrington, also in the UK. There are a lot, UK is like, lighten it up. We're, we're, we're still a little yeah. further behind in, in, in the U.S. But um, Kate, she talks about a smooth transition to perimenopause and menopause, which is like almost even worse of a topic than periods, you know, like because yeah. the way we see women as dried up and used and over <laughs> once they hit menopause. So she is like really breathing some amazing life into that space. Kate cool. is freaking awesome. Um, and yeah, I mean like so many good period books, like the fifth vital sign is an amazing period book, uh, period repair manual, taking charge of your fertility. Hit me up if you want more book recs. I've got period books for days. Uh, um, but, and then, uh, an underutilized resource is red tents. So these have popped up 
all over the country and all over the world. And they are a lot, a lot of them are electronic right now. And we, we run a red tent. My, actually, I don't, my co-founder does, but there are other organizations that do them as well, but it's a space where there could be a lot of period healing and reclamation around the cycle. Mm-hmm. So it's like getting together with other women and, you know, they, there are different activities and different things because the idea was in the past, women actually used to go have their periods together and they would go off to the red tent and they would have relaxation and rejuvenation and also kind of mystical time where their intuition was highly uh, enlightened and they could receive different things, messages flowing through them. So I would just say in general, finding a red tent in that kind of community um, is really underrated because having those safe spaces for conversations can be how we, we do the healing work. So those are like my top five period resources. I love that. I love that. I obviously we're in the time of COVID where having an actual physical red tent is probably not going to happen for a while. (laughs) I'm all for bringing that back when we safely can. um, Mm -hmm. Because I think that would be fantastic. And yeah, just being able to have even just getting a group of girlfriends and being able to have, you know, a safe and comfortable conversation around it. Um, Alex, I can't thank you enough for this. This has been awesome. I'm excited for your app and I'm excited to see this business grow uh, because it sounds really cool. So uh, please keep us posted on how things are going and uh, I'm happy to share any updates, obviously, with, with the listeners who I'm sure are also excited to hear about it. Yeah, this is awesome. And we're just, I just see this like red wave coming where we can just like all celebrate our periods and, and, and just like get to a place where it's just normal, you know, that more than anything, because it is periods are normal. So we should be able to, you know, hopefully get to that place one day, like we can move past celebration and just like live integrated where we don't even have to make it a big deal because it's just such a accepted part of our reality. So that is my hope for the planet. It's my hope too. I share that with you. I share that with you. Thank you so much. This has been wonderful. Awesome. Thank you for having me on. I, um, yeah, this has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Make sure to check out The Agenda Period by visiting the website, theagendaperiod.com. You can also connect with Alex and The Agenda Period over on social media. They're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Agenda Period, and all the links are in the show notes. You can find this little podcast by visiting uncomfortable.blog or you can find us on social media at uncomfortable.blog on Facebook and Instagram and uncomfy underscore podcast on Twitter. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you can support us financially, that would be wonderful. You can find more information on uncomfortable.blog forward slash donate. Thank you again so much for tuning in to this episode. Now go out there and get uncomfortable.